It's going to be sunny and hot this afternoon with a high of 98. The Desert City is a heat warning till 8 p.m. Sunny, high 110. I'm meteorologist Jim Minaldi for Smart Talk 1490 KMET. Take KMET 1490 AM with you everywhere you go by downloading our free smartphone apps found on the KMET website, KMET1490AM.com. You can also go to the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store on your phone to download the free app. Now you can listen live or play any of your favorite programmers' podcasts using your smartphone. Go to KMET1490AM.com and download your free phone app today. The following is a paid program. Views and claims expressed are those of the program producer and are not endorsed by this station. Opinions expressed are not necessarily those of radio station KMET, its management, employees, or affiliates. The WK Law Power Hour is here to take you from zero to hero in legal knowledge in 60 minutes. A law firm with 40 years of experience is ready to give you legal guidance you need for free. What could be better than that? Amazing stories about actual cases. Interesting and informative guests. Listen, watch, call in. Come ready to learn. And now your host for WK Law Power Hour, Paul Wallen. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the ninth show of this great WK Law Power Hour. And I'm very excited to continue this program because I feel so strongly that giving you guys legal knowledge is the legal power that you can use for so many reasons. Legal knowledge is the power you need to not only help yourself in legal situations, but when something comes up with a family member or a friend or anyone, you can be the bright person in the room and you can give the correct legal answer. I'm Paul Wallen. I have been a lawyer for longer than I wish to admit, four decades. I'm the senior partner of our law firm, Wallen and Claridge, and we're the host of this show. And we have different guests every week to help you educate yourself on different areas of the law. And what kind of things can you get educated on? Uh, Some more common things. We give advice on how do I beat a traffic ticket? Should I go to traffic school? Um, If you're facing a possibility of uh, going to divorce court, am I going to have to pay child support? Am I going to get custody of my children? All those kind of critical things in your life. And what about people who get a DUI? Should I take the blood test? Should I take the breath test? Should I take any test? Am I going to go to jail? Am I going to lose my license? These are exactly the kind of questions that we've answered on this show for the last nine weeks. And at 951-922-3532, you're our guest to just call us. And if you call us, then obviously we'll be glad to answer your question. And we will do our very best to satisfy your question. And hopefully you can then take that information to court or and when you make a decision on a contract or something like that. Today's guest is Patrick Luhan. He is a lawyer here at Wallen and Claridge. He's a brilliant lawyer. He handles many of our criminal cases. He also helps people clean up their criminal record. And he'll be here today to answer questions for the whole program on many different topics. Um, One, for example, is what happens if I get accused of domestic violence? Is that something that I need to be concerned about? And of course it is. And how do you defend yourself? And what if you're the victim of domestic violence? How do you get a restraining order? And should you get a private lawyer if you're accused of a crime or you should, or should you use a public defender? Those of you that uh, have my handle at Beach Lawyer Paul on TikTok can watch the show on TikTok, or of course you can listen to it at KMET 1490. I founded Wallen and Clarich over 40 years ago We've helped over a quarter of a million people in Southern California with their legal problems. And the more you understand about your legal problem, the less nervous you will be. I want to talk to you right now about, I'm going to talk to you about it now. I'm going to talk to you about this case, uh, the Trevor Bauer. If you guys have been awake and on online, you probably know that Cy Young Award baseball pitcher Trevor Bauer has been accused of sexual assault 
Trevor Bauer recently signed a contract for $102 million. And a woman who admits to having consensual sex with him has filed a temporary restraining order and made a police report and filed an 82 page document with the court along with medical evidence claiming that he beat her up, gave her black eyes, and the judge granted a temporary restraining order. And the next question is, if he if he was grant if she was granted a temporary restraining order, does that mean he's going to be prosecuted for a crime? The uh, the um, Major League Baseball League has suspended him through July 15th while they're waiting for the district attorney to decide what to do. The woman admits she came to his house and agreed to consensual sex, and she claims he went, quote, too far, and her allegations involve choking and engaging in anal sex. She claims against her will. Pasadena PD is investigating the allegations, but no criminal charges have been filed as of yet. And those allegations first were brought to their attention over a month and a half ago. So does that mean he's going to be prosecuted? Does that mean he's going to go free? After the break, we're going to be talking more about this, and we're going to talk to Patrick Luhan about restraining orders, the difference between a temporary restraining order and a permanent restraining order, how you go about getting one if you feel that your life has been threatened or your safety has been threatened. And we'll talk more about this case because every single day, more people than anyone wants to know has casual sex with someone that they really have just met and go to their home or a hotel and they really have no clue what is going to happen. And you just need to be careful. I have no idea if Mr. Bauer is guilty of this, these things or not. I just know that his career, his life, and his freedom are now all at risk. And after the break, we're going to talk more about this and talking about how you can protect yourself if you are someone who wants to engage in sex with a person you've just met. What can you do to maximize the chance you won't be falsely accused of sexual assault? That'll be after the break, and um, Patrick Luhan will be here, and hopefully we can have a very informative conversation. You've been charged with a crime, and now you're facing the loss of your freedom. Where do you turn to get out of jail or stay out of jail? The law offices of Wallen and Claridge. Call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With over 20 years experience and attorneys who work in your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. When you need help, make one call. Make it to Wallen and Claridge. 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? Hey, are you okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. 17 to Central Jail. If you've been arrested for DUI and are facing DMV in court hearings, it could mean losing your license, your job, and even your freedom. But Wallen and Claridge can help. Just call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With attorneys who know your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. Call Wallen and Claridge at 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? When your children are taken by social workers, it may be the worst day of your life. When will I see my children again? Where are they going? How can I get them back? Who can I turn to for help to end this nightmare? The answers to all these questions are a phone call or email away. Wallen and Clarish have been helping defend parents who are battling the system to regain custody of their children for 40 years. Many of their clients have done nothing wrong to warrant their children being taken from them. Other clients may regret some action that they've taken with their children. However, in every case, the clients desperately need their children back. That's where Wallen and Clarich comes in. They know the dependency system. They will do all they can to work to try to get your children back with you. Take the first step and call Wallen and Clarish now for a free phone consultation at 877-466-5245. That's 877-466-5245. Or visit WKLaw.com to chat with us. They'll be there when you call.
If you are facing criminal charges, your entire future is at stake. You need to act now to protect your job, your family, and your freedom. Call Wallen and Clarich at 877 no jail Wallen and Clarich has over 30 years of experience in fighting for our clients' rights. With local offices in Riverside and San Bernardino, we are here to help you now. Call 877 no jail or go to WKLaw.com. How much is your freedom worth? Call 877-466-5245. The call is free. Will you be? When you have a warrant for your arrest, it's a very scary time in your life. When you drive a car, you have to be extra careful that you do not commit any sort of moving violation. You have to be looking over your shoulder, checking for police officers. Will you be stopped and thrown in jail? What a horrible feeling. For over 40 years, we have helped thousands of persons resolve their problem with having a warrant. In some cases, we can actually appear in court for you without you being present to recall the warrant. Depending on the facts of your case, you may never have to do one minute in jail. Stop living in fear. Call us now for a free phone consultation at 877-4-NO-JAIL. That is 877-4-NO-JAIL. Or go to WKLaw.com. Isn't it time to get your life back? We will be there when you call. Hi, everybody. We're back. And we're here with Patrick Luhan, who is an associate attorney at Wallen and Claridge. And he's a brilliant lawyer. And hi, Patrick. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Paul? Fine. So, Patrick, everyone that comes on the show, the, the listeners, the viewers, they want to know as much as possible about the people that are being interviewed. So why don't you tell us something about where you grew up and where you went to college, et cetera? Sure. Uh, so I was born in Miami, Florida, and I lived there until I was 14. And then at 14, it was a uh, uh, product of the recession and and stuff like that. We we moved. My family moved to Pennsylvania, uh, and I stayed in Pennsylvania for about ten years. Uh, I went to middle school, high school, and then I ended up going to Penn State out in Pennsylvania as well. Um, I spent uh, about ten years there, and then I moved to California for law school. Now I originally was not planning on coming to California. However, my family uh, got a little bored of, of the small city Pennsylvania type area, and they decided they were going to move to California. And so I, I decided California would be a, a nice place to, to restart and, and go to law school. And so I moved to California when I was 24. Uh, and that's when I went to law school. Uh, I attended Chapman University in Orange, and great uh, school. Yeah, uh, absolutely great school. And then after that, I I uh, took the California bar and I I got a job at Wallen and Clarich. Boy, that was a lucky break. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Penn State, great university, and Chapman Law School, a great law school to get an education. When you were in law school, did you have a clue? when you started law school, what you might want to be, what kind of area of law you might want to practice? So I went into law school thinking that I wanted to do uh, entertainment law, right? I moved okay. out to California, uh, the city of stars, you know, <laughs> I, I, wanted to, I wanted to be uh, a big shot entertainment lawyer and uh, I could not have been more wrong. I started doing <laughs> courses in entertainment law and I just I couldn't take the subject matter I couldn't take uh, the, the constant just day-to-day uh, uh, -day of just contract work contracts and contracts and contracts and more contracts uh, just to change a single word out of a paragraph and it makes a huge difference and I, I just couldn't take it and I, I wanted more uh, people contact more interactions with with clients, with people uh, outside of just uh, the office. So I, I wanted to do something uh, where I would be able to get out of the office, go to court, talk to people, talk to clients, 
and, and really have a, a good impact on on some clients. And did you um, enjoy criminal law when you took it or criminal procedure, whatever criminal courses you took in law school? Yeah, so that, that was one of the areas that uh, got me interested in criminal law in the first place. So I took uh, my first year of law school, one of the required courses is criminal law. And uh, as part of the criminal law course, we had an, uh, I would say an interactive course. So it, the professor divided the class where half the class would be assigned as prosecutors and half the class would be assigned as def defense attorneys. And uh, every day uh, that you, you'd go to class, you'd be assigned a, a hypothetical problem or a problem based on, on real life. Uh, and you would come prepared and the class would just start out with one of the students, the prosecutors, charging uh, what their charging recommendation would be based on the hypothetical and then uh, another student would uh, uh, be assigned the defense and then you get to argue back and forth and that's how the class would go and that's how we basically learned uh, criminal law in that kind of setting. So it was very interactive, very, uh, very much um, uh, hands on with the material. So I, I really enjoyed that. And then after that, I... Let me ask you a question for a second. Sure. So in that course that you had, one day you'd be a prosecutor and one day you'd be a defense attorney and you would learn both sides, right? Absolutely, yeah. Did you have a feeling at the end of that class, you know, I think I'd rather be a prosecutor and prosecute people or I'd rather defend people or did you not know at the end of that class? I, I don't think it was yet cemented after that class. I think it was because we, uh, we were assigned half the semester as prosecutors and then half the semester as defense right. attorneys. So it wasn't like you could choose whether you wanted to be a prosecutor or defense attorney. You would be assigned half the class. Got so, it. Uh, I don't then it know was the next class. Then it was the next class you took that was a criminal procedure. Yeah, it was criminal procedure. It was my following year. I, I It was very similar structure where you'd be either uh, a city attorney or a prosecuting attorney or an attorney general and you'd be prosecuting and uh, the, uh, someone, another student would be uh, acting as the defense attorney. And I think it was that class that I really enjoyed uh, getting to know uh, the ins and outs of the, the criminal procedure and how I could be able to protect someone's rights. And even if maybe they did something wrong, everybody is entitled to a legal defense and everybody is entitled to uh, the prosecution upholding their burden of proving el every element of the crime. And I think it was that that class that I really started to fall in love with defense work. Is it um, the kind of thing, your belief in that, that it would make it difficult for you to be a prosecutor? I, I, I think, uh, you know, from this angle, I could say I, I could be a prosecutor, but I wouldn't be like, a gung ho prosecutor, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I would be the lenient prosecutor. I, I'd be the one who could understand that people make mistakes and and offer offer a decent deal and, and not try and and overcharge someone or over prosecute someone just because I want to make a name for myself. Uh, I think, uh, but it's always easier from this side of the of the courtroom, you know, to to sure. say, you know, I, I would do. I would do a better job and I wouldn't try and, and, and over prosecute or, or do something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Can you tell us the kind of criminal cases that you defend people for with our law firm, the different kind of them, just name them. Sure. So it starts as simple as traffic violations. I do uh, uh, DUI work, domestic violence work, um, um, I do uh, protective orders. I do uh, restraining orders. I do um, criminal threats. I do invasion of privacy. I do uh, hit and run violations. Uh, and then I do all, all the way up to uh, someone who may be uh, charged with uh, uh, 
sexual assault or, or right. anything like that. And so, I also, oh, I'm sorry. Got, no, that's okay. So what I'd like to know and like you to, to address is a lot of people who aren't in our world think, oh my God, these must be very bad people. There must be something morally wrong with these people who are accused of these crimes. So I'd like you to talk a little bit about the nature of the people you represent, the kind of work they do, married, single parents, to try to, is that a is that correct or incorrect assumption that these people are bad people? Yeah, I, I think, uh... I think a lot of times when a someone hears that you, I'm a defense attorney or another defense attorney that your defense attorney is they automatically get this idea how could you defend those people you know that everyone's a criminal and they forget like every everyone makes mistakes everyone everyone has a bad day uh, maybe they went out with drinks uh, to have some drinks with some friends and and they uh, it's the difference between half a drink sometimes or a few sips of a drink before you get behind the wheel where it makes you, uh, where it differentiates you as an innocent person and as a guilty person. So I think um, our clients sometimes, they, like I said, they, it was just a simple mistake, a simple misunderstanding, a, a, a few sips too much, uh, a, a uh, speeding through traffic at the rate everybody else was going, but they just happened to 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 be that one person that that got a ticket that day. So, so they're not bad people. Absolutely not. They have they work everyday uh, jobs. They 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 take care of their family. They uh, uh, many times they they show us all the community service they've done. So uh, when we prepare a mitigation packet. Uh, it's not like sometimes they have to go and do community service themselves and get it on their resume, but other times the client already has it on their resume. You know, they did community service, they participate in this volunteer activity, or they donate to this function every day, or they go to church every every Sunday, or 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 they uh, um, all sorts of things. And and these aren't uh, I wouldn't say bad people. I think I, I approach it more. They, they're good people that made a mistake or had an unfortunate circumstance. You know, I think I can't count the number of times in my career I'll be at a social gathering or in court or just about anywhere and people will say, how can you represent X person or for that crime? And then six months, a year, three years later, that same person is calling us to represent their husband or their son or their wife for yeah. the same kind of crime that they couldn't believe that we would represent someone for. And I guess that's the best example that the people we represent have lived good lives and mm. they made a mistake, some more than others, but the mistakes they made um, can be corrected in almost every situation. And we're up again the system where the prosecutors very often get promoted based on the percentage of cases that they get convictions, regardless of the individual circumstance of the person that they're prosecuting. Where's the persons, our firm and others that do what we do are standing basically as the only person on our client's side to try to convince the court that this guy deserves a break and he's not a bad person. And that's why sometimes it's hard to get a fair jury because sometimes jurors have this notion that if you're accused of a crime, you must have done something, which isn't true, is it? No, I actually, um, I went to trial with uh, one of the other partners here uh, at Wallen and Claridge recently, and uh, one of the jurors, uh, matter of frankly, just said, um, and it may have been because they were trying to get out of jury duty or, or whatever reason they said it, but they said, no, I would be able to be impartial. However, uh, there's a reason they're charging this person with a crime. Like, as if the defendant was already proven guilty, even though the trial hadn't even started yet. Right. And you know what people don't understand is there's a lot of good police officers 
and there's some bad police officers. There's a lot of good teachers and there's some bad teachers. There's a lot of good bank presidents and some not so good bank presidents. People sometimes have the perception that if you are a police officer, you not only never make a mistake, but you would never do something wrong. And then we have something like the Rodney King case that came along and then the more recent one um, where the police officer is now serving 40 or sentence of 40 years in prison, even though he had a badge on, he thought it was okay to put his neck on a black person's, uh, his foot on a black person's neck until the person died. So you have to keep an open mind if you're a juror and as a defense attorney, you have to keep an open mind and not presume your client guilty or how can you represent them, right? That's exactly right, yes. Yeah. Um, so when you are accused of a crime, when you're facing the possibility of jail, why do you think it's important to have a law firm that has a lot of experience in criminal defense that you hire as opposed to some law firm that doesn't? So um, I would say the more experience, the better, right? Uh, especially um, because law firms are very centralized in terms of their locations, the attorneys often go to the same courthouses, the same courtrooms, they see the same prosecutors, the same judges, you you generate a rapport with these, with the other side, basically. And you, instead of having to deal with um, someone who you don't know, and someone who's never stepped foot in the courtroom, doesn't know the procedures, doesn't know um, how how to get the best deal possible you can you can go to court knowing that this attorney has this reputation and has uh, these connections to get you the best deal possible um, I would say at least a hundred times in my career I get a call from someone who said my husband was accused of this crime and I just called uh, my uncle who referred me to a lawyer and he represented him for drunk driving his second offense he ended up getting a very bad deal where he got 90 days in jail and he should have got probably a weekend in jail if that and i find out that that lawyer never had handled a dui case the general public does not understand that you'd want a criminal defense attorney who has handled many many cases like this and not just any lawyer because any lawyer most lawyers don't know one thing about criminal defense, right? That's why people need us or people, uh, firms like ours, right? Uh, that's right. I think it's a very specialized field. And, and uh, you know, a lot of my other uh, grad friends at, at law school, they, they have no idea the, the ins and outs of the criminal law, the criminal courtroom. They've never even seen the inside of a courtroom in their life. Uh, but here at WK, we go basically every day and exactly. we're, we're looking at these people, we're talking to these people, uh, and, and we're generating relationships. That's very important. So at, we're going to go to commercial break now. And after the break, I'm going to ask, um, Patrick about representing people accused of domestic violence and also restraining orders. So now we'll go to the break. See you afterwards. You've been charged with a crime, and now you're facing the loss of your freedom. Where do you turn to get out of jail or stay out of jail? The law offices of Wallen and Claridge. Call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With over 20 years' experience and attorneys who work in your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. When you need help, make one call. Make it to Wallen and Claridge. 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? When your children are taken by social workers, it may be the worst day of your life. When will I see my children again? Where are they going? 
How can I get them back? Who can I turn to for help to end this nightmare? The answers to all these questions are a phone call or email away. Wallen and Clarish have been helping defend parents who are battling the system to regain custody of their children for 40 years. Many of their clients have done nothing wrong to warrant their children being taken from them. Other clients may regret some action that they've taken with their children. However, in every case, the clients desperately need their children back. That's where Wallen and Clarich comes in. They know the dependency system. They will do all they can to work to try to get your children back with you. Take the first step and call Wallen and Clarish now for a free phone consultation at 877-466-5245. That's 877-466-5245. Or visit WKLaw.com to chat with us. They'll be there when you call. Hey, are you okay to drive? Yeah, I'm fine. If you've been arrested for DUI and are facing DMV in court hearings, it could mean losing your license, your job, and even your freedom. But Wallen and Claridge can help. Just call 877-4-NO-JAIL. With attorneys who know your local courts, Wallen and Claridge can make the difference between jail and freedom. Call Wallen and Claridge at 877-4-NO-JAIL. The call is free. Will you be? When you are facing a serious criminal charge, it means you may be looking at many years in prison or doing up to one year in county jail. Most people do not know who to turn to in their time of need for expert legal guidance. What you do next can make the difference between ending up in prison for many years or having your charges dismissed and you going free. At this very critical time in your life, you need Wallen and Clarish fighting for you. Wallen and Clarish has 40 years of criminal defense experience and they work very hard to do all they can to win their clients' cases. Wallen and Clarish has a team of 10 criminal defense lawyers fighting for their clients every day. They help people with cases pending throughout California. They successfully defend cases dealing with murder, sex crimes, all felonies, as well as misdemeanors. Check out WKLaw.com for some real client success stories. They offer a free phone consultation to answer your questions. Call them toll-free at 877-4-NO-JAIL. That's 877-4-NO-JAIL. They will be there when you call. If you are facing criminal charges, your entire future is at stake. You need to act now to protect your job, your family, and your freedom. Call Wallen and Claridge at 877-4-NO-JAIL. Wallen and Claridge has over 30 years of experience in fighting for our clients' rights. With local offices in Riverside and San Bernardino, we are here to help you now. Call 877-4-NO-JAIL or go to WKLaw.com. How much is your freedom worth? Call 877-466-5245. The call is free. Will you be? Okay, we're back with Patrick Luhan, a brilliant associate at Wallen and Claridge, talking about the different areas of law, the different areas of criminal defense and related matters that Patrick handles here at our firm. And um, Trevor Bauer, a uh, star pitcher for the LA Dodgers, signed a contract for $102 million, and he went home with a young lady consensually, and now he's facing the most serious charges, I guess, other than murder one can face, and it not only now impacts his future, but it impacts his freedom. And we handle these kind of cases at Wallen and Claridge, and we represent people who seek restraining orders against perpetrators or alleged perpetrators, so we're very familiar with this. And one area of law, that uh, Patrick does is uh, helps people accused of domestic violence, right, Patrick? That's correct. Could you tell us how serious that crime is and what the ramp potential ramifications are for someone that's accused of that crime? Uh, of domestic violence in general? Yes. Okay, so yeah, the uh, domestic violence generally ranges in in severity, there could be misdemeanor domestic violence, there could be felony domestic violence, uh, and it could involve other allegations depending on uh, if uh, a lot of times, you know, when people are in the heat of the moment, they'll say something like, I'll kill you or something like that. And that right there raises it to, uh, it includes another charge and it raises, it can raise it to a felony uh, for for criminal threats, so it's very serious. And and um, but uh, one of the key distinctions with 
uh, domestic violence uh, that uh, there is in, in California is that even if it's a, a misdemeanor charge, the defendant will lose their right to own and possess firearms uh, in the state of California. Uh, and so in order for you, uh, everyday people, sometimes they, they have hobbies like hunting. So if you're accused of a domestic violence charge and you plead guilty and this, uh, this ban on firearms goes into effect, you could be looking at never engaging in your hobby again. So, so if you're convicted of domestic violence, first of all, you could face a felony or a misdemeanor. I think with a felony, it's three years as a maximum sentence, right? That's correct. And as a misdemeanor, it's one year or 364 days. And you, if you're convicted of either a misdemeanor or a felony, you lose your right to, to have a weapon or a gun for the rest of your life, at least under federal law, right? Uh, that's right. Yeah, so that's a major thing. And also the real possibility of jail. And if you're convicted of either a felony or a misdemeanor, don't you also have to do a tremendous number of classes? You do, yes. Um, uh, generally, any any sort of plea deal will involve a 52-week uh, domestic violence course where you have to go once a week to 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 this course and en engage in the uh, in the curriculum and, and try and understand domestic violence and, and for for this kind of situation not to happen again. And so, if you have to do 52-week class and you miss the classes, that's a probation violation, and you can then go to jail, right? It, you can, yes. And these classes are every single week, so it's before you plead guilty to domestic violence, you have to think of three years probation, the classes, no weapons, let alone if you are a parent and you're convicted of domestic violence, the chances of you getting primary custody of your child are almost zero. That's another ramification. People don't understand. They think, OK, I made a mistake. I'll go into court and plead guilty. Big mistake before you seek out like our law firm to try to help you. And how can we help someone accused of domestic violence? For example, what happens if uh, a spouse gets into an argument with their husband and gets pissed off at them and says, um, calls 911 and says he hit me and he punched me or something like that? Whether it's true or not, what's going to happen next? Well, um, generally, if it's a domestic violence uh, crime, the officers will always uh, arrest one of the parties just because they want to mitigate the situation, make sure that even if, uh, if, it, is, if it is at all true that uh, the situation doesn't escalate any further. So they try and de-escalate it by arresting one of the individuals. Um, once you're arrested, then you're booked, and then once we get the call, uh, charges are, are likely going to be filed or they're already filed. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to try and get all the discovery. We're going to review all the all the photos taken, any any police reports, any video surveillance, anything like that, uh, to try and uh, see what get get down to the to the truth of the matter and, and see what the best thing we can do is. And then if if it does happen to be true and it was just a situation that escalated and got out of hand and maybe you just grabbed your partner by the arm too 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 roughly, uh, then it's something we can we can deal with. We can put together a mitigation packet. We can paint you in the in the best light possible to to demonstrate that to the district attorney, try and get the charges either changed or try and get the sentence reduced. So if in fact um, someone calls the police, let's say a spouse, and says that he grabbed my arm and there's a mark, and let's assume he did grab the person's arm, but let's assume that the wife doesn't want her husband to go to jail because he'll lose his job and they need the money, and he says it'll never, it's never happened before, it won't happen again, and she says, I'm not gonna testify. If she doesn't wanna testify, how can they convict the her husband anyway, or can they? Well, they they can order her to uh, be present and to testify 
Now, if she decides not to, then that's a different situation where, in that case, the spouse would be uh, getting into their own legal issues with con contempt and stuff like that. But generally, they, they wouldn't have much evidence. They'd have to, they'd have to uh, present all the evidence based on the testimony of the officer who wasn't there at the time. So Correct. they don't know anything. Yes. So if, if a spouse refuses to testify in court, number one, they can be held in contempt. But there is a law that says if you are the victim of domestic violence, you cannot be put in jail for refusing to testify. The court can make you go to classes, but they can't put you in jail. So many times a victim of domestic violence, A, the person may have made it up in the first place and feels guilty, or B, they may not want to see their husband convicted for all the reasons we've said, so they refuse to testify. And sometimes when they refuse to testify, the punishment to the wife for not testifying is far less severe than the punishment that the husband will get. So that's why this situation comes up. The district attorney does everything possible. The police does everything possible to pressure the, the person that's the victim to testify, but often they do not want to testify. And they not only do they get made feel guilty, but it's ultimately up to them. Unfortunately, for the person accused, if the wife called 911, there's gonna be a tape of that. And that tape is admissible in court. And so they can actually use that because it's considered an excited utterance. So it's an exception to the evidence code. And they can, call, they can play that to the jury. And a jury could convict someone based on that, as well as physical evidence. But it makes the case much harder for the DA to prove when the alleged victim refuses to testify. And we are gonna be talking more about the, the Trevor Bauer case in just a minute, about this same kind of situation. Um, in fact, let's get to that for a second. So Trevor Bauer um, is uh, accused of extremely serious sex, uh, sexual violations of this woman. He's accused of um, having anal sex against her wishes, He's accused of uh, choking her. He's accused of giving her a black eye or two black eyes. Trevor denies the charges. And we don't know what's true or not true, but the woman apparently admits that she knew they were gonna have sexual relations. And she apparently was okay with some rough sex, but that Trevor got out of control. And this is what I said before the show started, and I want to repeat. I have been doing this uh, criminal defense stuff and domestic violence and restraining orders for four decades. And let me tell you, the most dangerous thing a guy can do or a woman can do is with someone that they do not know very well, that they meet at a bar, or they it's not a, a, a friend that's uh, putting them together, so it's a stranger in effect and there's drinking involved. It is like the most dangerous thing you can do because you have no idea what one person's sexual appetite is. You have no idea if that person wants to have sex with you. And even if the person says they wanna have sex with you, what kind of sex is okay? And then you've been drinking. And what about who's gonna remember what? And it's a crime in California to have sex with a person if you know the other person because of the fact they've taken drugs or alcohol is not able to consent. So even if the person doesn't complain, but they're too much under the influence, you can go to prison. So in this case, this woman who obviously knew who Trevor was and obviously knew he's got a $102 million contract, probably was interested in going out with him and came to the house voluntarily and agreed to have sex voluntarily. And then she claims that it got out of control. He's already been suspended from the, um, the Major League Baseball League. He's also facing the possibility of felony criminal charges. His entire career may be over. On the other hand, if he did violate this woman, it's another example of what can happen when you get too intoxicated or something else is going on to violate someone else's rights. What do you think about the situation so far that what you've read about, Patrick? 
Um, I think it's uh, I think it's a it's a tricky situation because uh, I think Bauer does have messages and photos of their chats together where it does indicate where she she was definitely interested in having uh, sexual relations, sexual intercourse, and um, the the messages go into uh, uh, suggest that the the party the parties wanted to engage in rough sex now where that line ends and it becomes a crime i think is where uh the prosecutors are going to have to decide what to charge uh bauer with so uh they clearly can't charge him with everything because some of it was obviously consensual uh but on the other hand uh it may seem that not everything was consensual according to the victim. Uh, so I think that's that's the line that they're going to have to to draw and, and see where where that line fits. And you know what? The police have been investigating this case now for well over a month and they haven't filed criminal charges. They the statute of limitations is much longer, so they still can file. And there are some statements made by a police officer that this case is, quote, bigger than we thought it would be. I don't know what exactly that means, but that normally is not good news for the defendant. What is What we do know is that a judge granted this woman a temporary restraining order. The permanent restraining order hearing is set for late July. In the meantime, even though no evidence has been presented, the, the, the baseball league has suspended uh, Trevor. Uh, first it was July 1st, then it was July 7th, and now he's been suspended July 15th. And it's likely he's going to be suspended again. Uh, from a financial standpoint, you can only imagine how much money he's using for every, losing for every game that he doesn't pitch. Um, uh, baseball fans have to put that stuff aside because we're dealing with um, extremely sensitive matter. Either this woman has been sexually assaulted, and if so, um, then this person, the defendant, uh, needs to be prosecuted. But on the other hand, it is extremely easy to make this kind of charge against anybody and especially easy against a celebrity because then you're in the newspaper, you're on the Internet, you could be an Internet star. I don't know what the motivation is of this woman. It could be entirely because she was sexually assaulted or there could be other motivations. As Patrick said, apparently uh, the defense lawyer for Trevor has introduced a uh, tape where she said she knew there was going to be some sort of rough sex. What is the line? How drunk were they? All these things. Again, yet another example. When you go out and you want to meet someone, don't drink too much because it could be it could be the worst decision of your life. And I know it's difficult, especially after COVID's being over, but it's very, very difficult. Um, Patrick, I want to talk about some of the other cases that, well, by the way, what courts do you primarily go to representing clients accused of crimes here for our firm? So I'm I'm uh, generally in Orange County and I handle uh, North Justice Center and Central Justice Center. And then I have a few cases, cases out of uh, West Justice Center and Harvard. So if someone gets accused of a crime in Santa Ana, Tustin, um, the uh, Orange, those areas, that's going to be like the uh, Central Justice Center in Santa Ana, right? That's correct, yeah. And you go there on a regular basis, right? I do, yeah. And so that means you get to know the prosecutors, you get to know the personnel, you get to know the judges, and you get to know the general sentencing for each of these crimes, right? That's right. And that has to be extremely helpful to our clients, right? Oh, absolutely. I, th I think uh, someone walking in there, without any knowledge uh, can sometimes be very, very tricky because the ins and outs of any particular charge could involve uh, one, one term of probation that isn't in another charge, as opposed to, uh, for example, the, the ban on firearms uh, if you're convicted a, of a domestic violence charge. If you walk in there and you plead guilty uh, without really understanding the consequences, uh, even if they're told to you, uh, you may need uh, 
I, I think it's very important that you have a lawyer there to really tell you uh, and explain to you what everything means on, on that sheet of paper. Another thing you do at our law firm is you help people clean up their criminal record, right? I do, yes. And how do you do that? Uh, so generally, the if you are convicted of uh, either a misdemeanor or a felony and you're granted probation uh, and you're not sent to prison, then you can apply uh, or you can petition the court for what's called a 1203.4 motion. Uh, and 1203.4 basically allows you to get an expungement uh, and expunge the criminal charges from your record. Now, it, it doesn't really do everything that it sounds like it would do. It doesn't just uh, disappear. It's still on your record. However, uh, instead of saying convicted, it'll say dismissed. And that, that could be the difference between uh, being able to get a particular uh, employment license. It could be the difference between able to get a, a, a particular um, uh, a, an apartment building, being able to apply for housing, being able to apply for benefits. It, it really can, can have a severe impact on your life, uh, be, having charges on your record. So 1203.4 really helps people uh, uh, that could change, the, change their life route. So if you get convicted of a misdemeanor and you hire us and we get your record expunged and then you apply for a job, unless it's for like a government license, and they say, have you been convicted of a crime? You can answer no, isn't that right? That's right. And that can be critical in the difference between you getting the job and not getting the job, right? That's absolutely right. Okay, and lastly, can you tell me, um, do you enjoy helping people accused of crimes and working at our place and why? I do, absolutely. I, th I, think, uh, I think every day I, I, I feel this sense of I'm actually being able to help people and uh, make a difference in their lives. And I think criminal law is particularly important because people are facing one of probably the toughest times in their life being charged with a criminal offense. So I think it's very important to have someone on your side and who has knowledge and expertise in this area. Yeah, I agree. Patrick, thank you very much for coming on the show. I want everyone to know if you are accused of a crime in Southern, in Southern California, especially Orange County, and you're lucky enough to have Patrick as your lawyer, you'll have someone that cares about you. Our firm cares about you and your family because you're not going through this alone. We know your family is also going through this and having someone like Wallen and Claridge on your side is a good bet. I want you guys to have a great week and we we'll back and see you next week for another WK Law Power Hour. Have a great week. Thank you.